And so the next time I went to the place, there was a madman there. And I was like, a madman, that's good. What's a madman doing here? Then when the madman got close to me, I noticed it was Einstein. I thought, that's interesting. Einstein's in my dream. And he's a crazy person. And he was just burbling at me. But when I woke up in the morning, I remembered some of the burble. And I thought, that's interesting. So I started to work, work on some of the principles I already learned in years prior. And I started to remember some of the work I used to do before I got angry or got rich. Angry and rich probably goes together quite well, I would figure. So I, I, I looked at it and I found that it was showing me shape and colour. He was showing me shape and colour. And so next time I found myself in that dream space, I was more curious. So instead of just watching and listening, I actually started to interact. And Einstein didn't appear the next time, but other beings. And, and two different races appeared. And I, it took me a while to figure out what those races were, but one was an Atlantean and one was Lemurian. And I'd never seen Atlanteans and Lemurians before, up close. And they weren't talking to me, they were talking to each other. But I thought, nah, stuff this, I'm going to, I want to get involved with this conversation. So I tried to start talking to them. But that I didn't exist. <laughs> they didn't see me at all. So I thought, okay, they must be talking about something that I need to listen to. So instead, I stopped and I listened. And a human form appeared. And it showed, it showed points of the body and colour. So that's the first thing I saw, points of the body and colour. So immediately, obviously that's chakras. Immediately when I woke up that next morning, I took, okay, chakras. No, nope. mm, wrong, not chakras. So I was going, okay, what do they mean? So I, start, I, I got drawings of chakras and I started looking at them. And every day when I was walking, I'd take one or two different chakras and I'd look at them. And all of a sudden I realised in the centre of a chakra there's something else. It's a pyramid. And I thought, oh, so that's what they're showing me. They're not showing me the chakra, they're showing me what's in the centre of the chakra, the essence of it, where the power base of it is. So I started visualising different, different chakras, and they didn't like me calling it chakra, so I decided just to say energy points. So I started visualising different energy points when I walked, and all of a sudden, I started to feel better. But not just feel better, I started to know more. I started to be able to get answers when I needed them, when I wanted them. And for the next six months, I walked in the bush and I focused on six of my main power points. And it's this one here, and this one was purple that I saw, saw it as. This one here is blue, speech, the third eye. But they, they didn't say this was the third eye to me, they said it's the clarity of mind. So they didn't call it the third eye point, they said the clarity of mind. If you don't have clarity, you see nothing. So this is where your clarity is. Speech. And this one here was an interesting one because they showed it's red. And see, I always knew red was here. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Why would they show me red here? Then they said it's expression. And they also showed that that is where all our frustration is. And, that, and, and basically, over the years, my research has showed me thyroid problems are probably the most prominent problem in humanity, nearly. Because if you look around, most of us are overweight or underweight. And that, that, that bears directly often on the thyroid. And so frustration is built up on this point, and that's why it's red. That, that's what they showed me. It's red rag to the bull. Okay, so red. Now obviously green is the heart, and that they said to me, "This is not where love is. Not in the, not not in what we're doing here. This is where joy or pain is." And the next point they showed me is this one here: a solar plex, and orange was the colour that they put on here. And the last point of the six they showed me is this, the, these ones: the hands, and it was turquoise. And over a period of about two years, I slowly structured with what I, what I got in my dreams to what I did in the day. And I ran an exercise regime, cyclic, on visualizing these points. And after a while, they started to take a form of their own. 
So every time I, even now if I visualize any one of those points as a pyramid, it might turn into something else immediately. It could spin, it could turn into different shapes. It, it, it has a, now has a full mind of its own. And, and also, I found why that is. Why does it have a mind of its own? Because I'm curious. I ask lots of questions and I go, why does this teaching have a mind of its own? And they said, of course it does, because you're centering yourself. And when you center yourself, you go to your higher mind. So you go out of your lower consciousness into your higher consciousness, and your higher consciousness stores the universe. So it's a huge mind of its own. And so the access to... The, to, to so I found, what I found is the exercises were access to a different part of who I was, and a part that I couldn't see before I did those exercises. And, yeah, it was amazing. And so I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I, I kept going, and I did more and more of the exercises. And then I found more points. And in the end, I found 13 points on the body. And so gold is the higher mind. Purple, and through the other, other ones I just did. And then there's black and white in the center. And the Kundalini one, and that was the one I was mostly interested in, because Kundalini used to be red, because it's the base point or the base power. Well, they said it's magenta in this teaching. And it's one to leave alone as <laughs> well. That was interesting. That's what got me curious about soulmates because they said you need to leave that point alone. It's an unfriendly point to humanity. It's been overused and it's created an energy field with it that is deceptive. So if you meet soulmates and get a cool feeling, I wouldn't be relying on the cool feeling too much because the Kundalini is a very powerful point and it needs to be absorbed through all the other points. About a month ago, my guides, or my higher self, a part of both probably, to be realistic, indicated to me that it's time now to put a name on the teaching and actually teach some other teachers it. And I'm like, all right, that's a challenge. <laughs> name. First factor, one of my options was never to get into this position, never to name anything and keep everything just whatever, okay? Not structured. I'm not a very, very, very structured person. I left school, well, I got expelled from school in the early, uh, early years, and I am severely dyslexic. So if you ever get an email from me, if things seem to back the front in it, you'll, you'll understand why. <laughs> Mostly I can't even read my own writing, let alone someone else reading it. I've called the teaching, and I've found a name, and I'm going to call it Transdimensional Shift. But the one thing this teaching will do to you as an individual is it will take you to you. It won't take you to me. It won't make me anything. It won't make me special. Okay? It will make you special. I would prefer that each individual on this planet learns who they are. And this is what this will do now. I know exactly where the teaching comes from now. I know exactly what it can do. And what, where it comes from, it's Lemurian technology. It comes from Lemuria. It's very ancient. It's way before chakras, actually. So it's got nothing to do with that. It doesn't cross over with them. It doesn't interfere with them. It's not part of that, that grid. A lot of people get confused with the chakras against this. This is something very different. And that's why I'm calling it transdimensional shift. Each of your base power points of your body is where your light body interacts with you. And every time you do this teaching, it makes you grow up. Now, the Lemurians used to use this teaching to grow up. So when they came to a certain age, and they grew out of adolescence, they started the exercise regime that I've developed. And it used to grow them into a magical being. Because they obviously weren't human, humanoid. But, uh, yeah. And so what this will do is it will grow you back into your magical being. And so it, to do that, it has to clear what's stopping that. And this is where the challenge comes in with this teaching. I haven't met anyone who's gone through this teaching Anyone at all who hasn't been challenged heavily, who hasn't had to face heavy amounts of pain, who has, there's lots of support with the people around, but that's what it's about. And usually with my classes now, I'll say to people, if you come along, there's one exercise I give out. If you do it one time, there's not an off switch to it, okay? Because it changes consciousness. So you can't turn it off. All you can do is manage it better. Okay? So if you are interested and you're going to use this type of technology, 
You need to understand you are going to face yourself in, in your entirety. Not just your fluffy self. Not just your good self. You're going to face all of yourself. All of yourself that you've been collecting for... I don't know how long. Each of you need to figure out how long you've been around. Old soul, new soul. Doesn't matter. There's no bearing on anything. It matters, of, it matters more if you understand who you are. And the teaching's simple. All you need to do, first factor, is figure out what's your base point. What point were you born on? Everyone's born on one of two points, either this one or this one. Okay, everyone on the whole planet. And each one of you got to figure out which one's your base point. And that's the starting point that you used to start. And all you need to do is visualize a four-sided pyramid like this, or this, because the orange and purple are those two points. So you need to visualize one of those two in your mind's eye before you go to sleep at night. That's it for 30 seconds. It's very simple. You can say, please clear my higher self. You can, you can put instruction into that visualize exercise if you want but it doesn't really matter because it's going to activate that point or this point. And what will happen is more than likely, and this is what's happened to hundreds of people, within a few days of you doing that exercise, you're probably going to have nightmares. You might feel like crying at random anywhere. You might be at work and just want to cry, literally, and you, cannot, you will not be able to stop this. There's been plenty of times where I've been at places where I just start crying uncontrollably. And I can't stop it. And I, like I was in a bar and I couldn't stop it. And people were saying, what's the matter? Nothing was the matter. Honestly, nothing was the matter. Nothing I, I could identify in my mind anyway, let's say that. Okay, it must have been something else. Because it, it wasn't in my mind. Nothing happened to me. I'd been clearing a lot of my clutter. No, nothing was of a concern. But it was in my body cell memory. So my tears were cleansing. But what's been happening on this planet is the mind is dominant. And everyone thinks, thinks, thinks way too much to say the least. Thought, 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 thought it knew a lot, but it knows therefore, okay? So you should keep, be careful what thought, thought. It's a very dangerous conscious is thought. And if you think you can brainwash thought, go ahead and try. Create a mantra, brainwash yourself, see how long that will last. How long it will last, okay? It'll be good for its time, don't get me wrong, it'll be beautiful. Make you feel good, or will it? Make you think you feel good, maybe. Maybe think you feel good, you see? So we're moving to a time now where every man, woman, and child who's standing on this planet has to encompass their light. Or become enlightened, if you want to call it that. It doesn't matter. And if you, if you are in your mind too much, you can't. And you might say, why can't you encompass your light when you're in your mind? It's quite simple. The mind, everything you think, stores in the body cell memory. That's where the light goes, in the body cell memory. So when you're filling up your storage with thought, I'm sorry, the light can't get in. Not so easy for the light to get in when there's so much thought in there. So that's why Buddhists, for example, put a lot of emphasis on contemplating the navel on a hill. Because, you see, that takes them out of thought and it puts them in light. It's quite simple, but we can't all go and contemplate our navel on a hill. That's not practical our society wouldn't go anymore. So what we need to learn to do is create a balance. And the exercises will do that automatically without, without any thought attached to it whatsoever. The worst thing you do is think about what the exercise is doing and accept, accept obviously what comes from them. Most people have an easy time with them. I've only noticed about one in ten have quite extreme and I do, a lot of the young ones I've been working with, what they do is they, ru they run, so they race, they want to do it quickly. Once they figure out what it's doing, they, running's not good. It's like if you ride on a, a fast horse, if you fall off, it hurts a lot. If you ride on a Clydesdale, well, you know, it doesn't hurt as much when you fall off. So don't ride on fast horses, really bad for the health. But you see, the mind, that's what our mind does. It wants us to speed everything up. It wants things to happen now, not tomorrow. And that stores our body cell memory. So that tells our body cell memory that it needs to move faster. And that's what, what our light doesn't like because our light body really 
is nothing. It's just there. Okay? It, it either sits in front of us or it sits behind us. If it's behind you, that's not such a good idea. In front of you is the best place for it. But if it's sitting there, where does it want to do, go? What does it want to do? Well, it doesn't know unless we instruct it. So we have to be consciously, consciously aware of, of it. Because it's, it's a storage facility. And if we're consciously aware of it, it will enter, enter here where our light is. See, there's a light here, and our light body sits here. And it accesses our power points. But as the power points shut down, for example, this is a good power point. I, don't, I have not met a human so far that has unconditional love at the frequency that is needed to access this point properly. So I consider all of humanity's hearts are closed. And the reason I consider that is because if I say, I love you, or I love you, I'm delusional. I'm completely delusional by saying that. Because I cannot love those two. Because I don't love myself. Okay? So what, I, what it would be better to say is, I love me, I love you. Okay? I'd be a lot better to say that. I'd be a lot better to say that every day, actually. Until I believe, consciously believe, that I love me. Then maybe, just maybe, I might feel good. And see, the heart stores what? Pain or joy. But you see, if you face your pain and accept your joy, then you might get love. And so that is the point that will bring you to the center. And the center is where love is. It's our light. Of course that's where love is. It's not in, not in the heart. So the idea of that love's in the heart is, again, it's another delusion of the human mind. It's because we want it to be there. We want the heart. We've got hearts everywhere. And we want that heart to... That heart over there, I want that heart to love me. But I can't. So what happens is, I'm in a relationship with someone and I want their heart to love me. But it can't, and it never can. And so what happens is I meet someone and everything's great. Lots of lust, that's great. Everyone loves that. You know, so that keeps joy. Lust makes joy, that's excitement. So you have lots of that. A year or two later, that's not so lots of it anymore. Oh, shit. But now what I want more as I want that heart to love me now, but I can't. So I become more disillusioned, more disillusioned with the person I'm standing next to because I want something from them that they can't give me. This is, guys, this is relationship after relationship. I do relationship counselling here, here in New Zealand and in Australia, and I have not met one relationship yet that hasn't got this problem. Not one. You guys can prove me wrong any time you like. You can bring me a relationship and show me one that hasn't got this access problem. It's because our mind, and it's a simple problem, but don't get me wrong, it's not a bad problem, it's just it's simplistic. We make it complicated because of what we want. But our mind tells us a story. It's not a very good story, mostly. And so we've got to stop listening to that story and start feeling. And as for the Kundalini, it's just too powerful to play with until you activate the rest of the six. And so you can never ever, for example, you want to find a soulmate, the Kundalini can't do that. And, and there is an ex some exercises that I do, and I will demonstrate them um, shortly on how better to, to see if a soulmate's in front of you and remove the Kundalini energy from the grid, because that's what you actually need to do. I'm not very politically correct, guys, and I, and I don't. A lot of people have said to me as a speaker, you've got to get more. They, they want me to go to speech therapy and do this sort of stuff. And, I, and funny enough, the last talk I gave in Australia two weeks ago, there was probably a couple hundred people at the talk, and the biggest feedback I got was it was so good to see someone who it just is and, and, and is not perfect. And I was like, wow. <laughs> so I'm like, now stuff the speech therapist. That was what showed me, you know? Yeah, just be myself, whatever it is. If I say too many words too many times, I say the same word too often, does it really matter? And do you know what? Do you know the only reason it does matter? is because the people it matters with are the ones you need to be worried about, actually, guys. And if it matters with you, you need to worry quite seriously about yourself. Because if you think too much, then you're not feeling. And when you're not feeling, your body forgets to be light. And when it's dense, it grows ugly little things in it that we don't like. Or grows bigger than we like, maybe. So that is the main factor. 
each of you can easily tell yourselves if you have a problem by observing what you're thinking. All the time. Spend, spend the next few days. Like a good one is to do this, is to go somewhere where no one else as you know, okay, beach, park, whatever, sit there for about half an hour and observe yourself. And try and think just about yourself and see how long you can last thinking just about yourself before your mind smashes into you and, and makes you think about stinky stuff about someone else or stinky stuff about the earth or the planet or da-da-da, whatever. Whatever stinky stuff it wants to make you think about, okay? Because it's making you think about that. You're not in control. If you're in control, you wouldn't allow your mind to make you think about stinky things. You would, you would manage it straight away. You would go, okay, I've had a stinky thought. What does that mean to me? Because it means something to me, not to, not, 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 not to the stinky things, it means something to me. So it's like, okay, let's work out what it means to me. Let's fix it. I want to get rid of those stinky thoughts. Stinky thoughts are not balanced. Stinky thoughts are storing in my body cell memory. More stinky thoughts in my body cell memory, wahoo, man, not good for the health. More I don't feel very well at all, you know. See, you don't need doctors, guys. You need no st if you remove stinky thinking, doctors will be obsolete. And most people are stinky thinking so much these days, they don't even notice anymore. I'll drive along the Auckland motorway, crash, crash, kill, kill, the whole time in their mind. They won't even notice they're doing that. They, uh, yeah. And, and this is the thing. We have to observe. We have to observe more clearly. So one exercise I do give out is a minimal of two hours a week and half an hour lots is your time. And you've got to think about yourself. Now, if you can think about yourself for seven hours, then you'll be perfect. Okay? Perfect. No, I'm not joking. You'll be perfect. Because... You'll fix problems. Honestly, you guys, where's the problems exist? Are they outside ourselves or inside ourselves? I, I, I'm really like, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm thinking the problem's inside myself. It's not outside me. Anything outside me is showing me what's inside me. I'm looking for nine people in New Zealand. I don't care who they are. They can, anyone can put their hand forward. Uh, one th all I'll say is if you want to train in this teaching, the first part of the training is to face yourself. And in, in this teacher's class, because... I'm politically correct a little bit, I won't be in this class at all politically correct. So if you're not facing yourself, I'll grab it out of you and pull it out and show you it. Okay? And I, I, I allow other people to do that to me at any time. I, I'm completely open to someone finding something in me that I'm not seeing and showing it to me. And if I don't like it, that's the best thing. Okay? I really don't want to like it. So I want people to find things in me that I don't like. I'm, that is my goal in life, to find people who can find things in me I don't like. Because when I find them, they're my soulmates. Because that's the biggest identifier of a soulmate. Soulmates, soulmates see things in me that I can't see. That is, the, that is one of the biggest identifiers of how to identify a soulmate. That's why mostly we don't like our families very much, because they're busy telling us stuff about ourselves that we don't like, okay? Don't want to face, whatever. I'm going to talk about some of the products that we've been developing in conjunction with uh, this teaching. Now, the products are all based on the PowerPoints, all based on that technology using crystals, pure crystals. Now, crystals are quite simple. All they do, depending on their shape, their size, and their color, because remember the universe is made up of what? It's made up of energy, okay? But then after the energy, it's made up of shape and color. So everything in our whole universe is either shape, color, or energy. That's all it is. There's nothing else. Nothing else exists but those three things, just like the three parts of us. Nothing else exists but the three parts of us. So what are the three parts of us? Shape, color, and energy. <laughs> Same thing, okay? We're part of the universe. Planets that. So crystals are that as well. Shape, color, and energy. Now, I've been studying crystals for a long, long time now, and I understand them very, very well. Crystals take 2,000 years to form okay, in the ground. They start off with molten lava. Molten lava is every mineral you can think of. Or called magma, if you want to call it magma, whatever you want to call it. And as it gets close to the surface of this planet, it starts to dry. And over a 2,000-year period, 2000 year period, it dries, and it becomes solid mass. And whatever, types of solid mass, lots of different types. Thousands of minerals there are, thousands of them, literally. What these crystals actually do is they transmute energy. They absorb low frequency and expel high frequency depending on shape and size and color. A cube, okay, this is, this is speech, it's blue, okay? So this is, this is a trans-dimensional te telecommunication device that I've developed. I have four of them. 
and I can speak to beings off-world using the four of them in conjunction with my pyramids. Now, it works very, very well if you believe it does. So first you have to understand who you are because it doesn't work at all. It's a lump of rock. It's a lump of rock to most people okay, on this planet. They have no understanding of themselves. That's why it's a lump of rock. But when they understand themselves, they understand that this is themselves. It's just another, 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 another type of form of who you are. But it's more pure than us because it hasn't got a thought. This doesn't have a thought. So this can be used to enhance our energy frequency because it doesn't have a thought. It doesn't think about it, itself doing that. It's also, that's why it can be also dangerous. <laughs> and it can blow things up too. Well, depending, not this one particularly, but the, but the Atlanteans blew things up with them. <laughs> so they know about that. So you do need to be careful with crystals because, yeah, they don't have a thought. So they, they don't know right or wrong. They don't have understanding of that. They just, they just act and do. The crystals we've been developing, this one particularly I don't sell anyway. Uh, this, this, one, this, one I'm just, this one's here for show for you guys. I use this uh, to do work, to increase energy in a field to around 25 megahertz using these, these cubes. And by increasing energy to 25 megahertz, it means things are lighter. Okay, so if, if I put you inside that 25 megahertz, you'd become lighter. So it would clear your body somewhere out. I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea. I'll practice it on some of my other longer people that I've been working with to see if it works well or bad for them and freaks them out and blows their heads off. I'm not sure because, you see, if they're only vibrating at, say, 11 or 12 megahertz, if I put them in a frequency field of 25 megahertz, they need to be prepared for that because when they leave that frequency, when they go to sleep is when it activates, by the way. So as soon as they sleep, they separate from their human self. And when you sleep, what happens is you separate from your human consciousness and hop in your light body. That's when you see the differences is when you hop in your light body. These here, these pyramids, these are the first product I developed. Okay? Now these are based, obviously, on the points of the body. And we spent two years trialling these in Auckland. We've currently sold around 600 sets of these in Sydney and Auckland over the last 12 months. They're very, very popular. A school in Australia and a school in New Zealand has just asked for four sets each for the classrooms for special needs kids. I have been working a lot with these with special needs kids, but what they actually do, there's a set of seven, so instead of six, there's a seventh one. I better talk about the seventh one. The seventh one, in this case, is the emotional body. And the human emotional body is our buffer zone. So this one helps to zero the human emotional body so you're not emotionally charged. It's really bad to be emotionally charged, and most of us are too often emotionally charged. It creates damage, damage to our bodies. So the seven one's just that, okay? It's not a... But the six main ones are the base points, and they're the most important. And what these do is, if you put these in your home, or in your workplace, or anywhere, they, cl they clear around a 600 square metre space, above, below, and around, and they, they enhance the frequency 15 megahertz, okay? So they increase frequency vibration to a stable 15 megahertz. Now, currently on planet Earth, the frequency vibration, and, and you guys can go and look around online for this if you like, and ask about frequency, check online, and it'll tell you all sorts of stuff, but the frequency ri vibration is peaking at the maximum at 16 megahertz in some areas on the planet, and it's its lowest is around 8. Now, 8 was the main frequency that most scientists used to measure on. They measure everything on eight. Well, since 1980 to 1982, the frequency had increased. And it, it's, it's partly to do with the solar wind, the solar shifts, da, da, da. I mean, it's a whole teaching. I'm not going to go into it. But it's a lot to do with the planet shift. And also our consciousness shift is part of that as well. And so right now, Auckland, for example, is currently the highest frequency city in the planet. And it is at around 16 megahertz. But the problem is that's ground vibration. But that's not this building. Okay? That's not your homes. Your homes will be at the vibration of the lowest denominator. So the person at the lowest vibration in each of your homes, that is where the home sits. Because that's the person who stinky thinks the most. Okay? The person who stinky thinks the most lowers their own body vibration. So this is where these have come in very, very, very powerfully, as soon as these goes, go into home environments, and we've got a lot of documentation, and I'm talking like, I put them in a Jewish family's uh, uh, environment, and, and, and obviously they're religious, they have their religion, but they thought they'd try it, and then I said to them a month, month later, I'm going to take it out, I took it out for two days, the mother was on the phone, get that back here, I, I want those back here, please can you bring them back, I said I'm happy to buy them now, 
I said, fine. You can have them for free because you, 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 you did my trials and you give me documentation. Okay, so it doesn't matter what your religion is or what your denominator is. These are basic. They lift your frequency to 15 megahertz. And by doing that in the home, what happens is mis miscommunication stops between the two adults. Children start, start to stop having negative effects. Nightmares, stuff like that start to stop. The man coming home from work or the woman coming home from work, stressed off their trees, shitty job, shitty day, shitty people they work with, gossip, stinky thinking, okay, comes home from work, brings that work home, affects the kids, kids freak out, kids, kids can't handle it, too stressed still from work, you put these in the environment, as soon as they step through the door, gone, can't even think. Try. Honestly, you ask people, they can't even think about their day anymore as soon as they step in that environment. Their thought is shut down because the 15 megahertz frequency is actually, is, is actually our projection frequency. So it's actually our thought frequency. So what it does is it speeds up and clears simultaneously at the same time by putting those in your homes. And this was the second piece of technology we made. We, we named this a dreamlet. It's therapeutic. Some of these lovely ladies wear it all the time. I don't recommend that. I recommend you wear it when you sleep or when you're at home only. Now, obviously, we found that pyramids are very difficult to sell to mainstream people. So what we did is we worked out another structure to how to create high frequency personally on an individual basis. And we came up with these. What they actually do is when you go to sleep at night with it on, they create a separation from your lower mind or your thought and shift you into your light body. So most people, after a while, I mean, I think we've got 200 uh, testimonials, and they're all different. Pain relief, da da da, whatever. So many different things people are saying. The, the, the main three areas that we know that, that pretty much works for nearly everyone is children with bedwetting problems, you give them this, pretty much puts a stop to it. Not in all cases, sometimes I have to do counselling, it depends how severe it is, but in about 80% of cases it stops it. Children with nightmare problems, the first night of wearing these, no more nightmare problems. I've got testimonies from parents in schools all over Auckland saying that as soon as they put this on, they have not had another nightmare problem with their children ever since it's been there. I have a crystal coming that I've just had made in Brazil that is the only one like it in the world that I know of. It's based on this technology. Now this is, this is an interesting one, this one. This is an external tetrahedron. Yeah. Okay. It's got five-sided pyramids on it, and it's 12-pointed. This is what you look like, basically. Now you can go to 24 points. You can go to eight points. You can go to nine points. But 12 points at the moment is a real focus because our 12-dimensional bodies are what we're collecting. And the only way to collect your 12-dimensional bodies is to trans. That means you to shift into alignment. How do you shift into alignment? That means our human self, our thought self, and our light self need to shift into alignment, trans. Okay? That's why I call my teaching trans. Because the third, the fourth, and the fifth dimension are shifting into parallel. And once it shifts into parallel, then you have access to those other dimensions up to the twelfth. So you can actually see who you are. You can travel down tunnels. You have lots of magic. All of you have lots of magic. But to shift those three into alignment, you have to do that. The planet is not doing it for you, okay? The, the change at the end of this year is not doing it for you guys. It's doing it for the rest of the, the planet and the rest of the solar system. It's doing it for them because they're doing it. They, they have their own consciousness. They're doing it themselves. We're not doing it, okay? Most of us aren't doing it. So the more we don't do it, I can tell you, it ain't going to be great and it ain't going to be a ball of roses from next year onwards on this planet. I'm, I'm not a doom and gloom person. I think... This time right now on planet Earth is the most beautiful and spectacular time ever recorded in history. Never, ever would I choose more to come at this time into human form. Okay? So, but I do know that it is so important that each of you learn how to create balance within your being. Now, it doesn't matter what teaching. There's been a few teachers that it doesn't matter what teaching you use. It really doesn't. As long as it resonates with you and it centers you and feels good. What it does for the people who've got them, they put them next to their bed when they sleep and they find themselves in their light body immediately once this goes into their room. Because this is the same energy frequency because it's the same shape, okay? It's simple, guys. See, everything's shape, color, or frequency. You create a crystal to be the same shape as your light body. Of course, you're going to be able to access it. And by accessing it, 
what are you accessing? It's us, it's the same thing. See, see people, a lot, there's a lot of teachings around going, everything's one, everything is, and that's true, in this form, this form only. In this form, <laughs> that's a different story. Nothing is one in the human form. We're all, we're all separate. And that's God's, God's will, or whatever, to make us separate. So we learn. That's why we've been made separate, to learn. But do we learn? Yeah, we do. But we learn intellectually. Rather than feel. Okay? So you have to learn both to create balance. See, if you feel and... and if, you, if you observe... So if you listen and hear... Or listen and feel. Do you know the difference? Words are bad for your health, guys. If you ever, if you ever want to read yourself, a picture is a thousand words. Why would you put words on it? Why would, why would you waste yourself putting words on it? You can't feel words. Words, uh, 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 you don't have the ability to feel words. There are some languages on the planet you can feel into. Some of the Mary, Mary words is feel. Not, not all of them, most of them again go back to the mind. Uh, some, some of the ancient uh, Hebrew, some of, some, Mus some of the Muslim languages uh, have a lot of feel attached to it. Problem is they put too much mind words in there too. So best thing you can do if you want to create change and look for blocks, you need to find shape and colour <coughs> that makes you feel. Good or bad, whatever, makes you feel, okay? Whatever it makes you feel, it doesn't matter. Because right and wrong is a concept. Do you believe the concept or not? I don't believe right and wrong. I don't believe the concept of it, okay? I believe I do and act and interact myself. If I make a mistake, then I'll work on that mistake. But I don't believe someone else telling me what's right and wrong because it's a concept. It's their concept, not mine. Unless they annoy the crap out of me, then I'll know that they're telling me a truth of mine and it's definitely my concept.